I'm Dr. Josh Matthews. On this episode of What Makes This Movie Great, a very special movie. You know, every 10 episodes, I'm going to do a movie that's extra special to me. Coming up next is Andrei Tarkovsky's masterpiece, The Mirror. <laughs> There's a lot I love about Andrei Tarkovsky. The center of his work is an autobiographical movie of a sort. To me, The Mirror is hypnotic. It's a work of art that's basically unparalleled in all of cinema. It's hard to even imagine if you were to give the assignment, go shoot an autobiography of your life or a quasi-autobiography, that anybody would come up with anything like The Mirror. If you've never heard of this movie, it's not going to be that easy to engage with if you're expecting an ordinary plot with ordinary character development. I think you just need to watch this movie on the largest screen possible with the sound up and let it wash over you. I'll try to tell you a little bit of what to expect in this movie. And here's one way of looking at it, although it's not the only way. There's a voiceover narrator in the movie in the modern day present, that is 1975 when this movie was released. And you never see the face of this voiceover narrator, although you do see his body. There's something happening to him, and I won't say what because it spoils the movie. In fact, do not go read about this movie because it will spoil what will be revealed in some of the movie's final shots about this voiceover narrator. This narrator narrator seems to be reminiscing about his past and mixing present-day interviews with his wife with past reminiscences of the 1930s and 40s as a child in Russia. You get scenes of his mother at a rural countryside house and of this voiceover narrator and his sister also at the same house as children. And the movie will cut between different time periods, the past and the present, different moments in the past, and it's not linear at all. There's scenes of this narrator as a young child. You see him with his head shaved, I think because of lice. And you also see him as a little bit of an older boy, even training to fight during World War II. The childhood scenes do take place during World War II, which is a very haunting moment for Tarkovsky himself, who grew up during the horrific invasion of Russia and the Russian war efforts during World War II. The movie heavily focuses on at least two characters other than the narrator. One is the voiceover narrator's mother, who you see as a young woman, a beautiful young woman, whose husband has left her to go off to war, and she doesn't know if he'll ever return to the countryside home in which they live during the 1930s and 40s. You also see this mother as an older woman, and the movie will mix together shots of her as a young woman and old woman. It's reminiscent of what you see at the end of 2001 A Space Odyssey, when David Bowman watches himself age. Another character is the voiceover narrator's wife, and you're not really sure what the relationship between the wife and the narrator is. Are they on the outs? What's happening to them? And they discuss pretty seriously what they're going to do with a child at some point in the near future. The child is a boy like the voiceover narrator's past reminiscences, which you see in the movie. Here's what this movie does amazingly well. It cuts together the past and the present. Reality, dreams, hallucinations, visions, memories, literature, and art, they're all sort of seamlessly integrated, and you can't really tell which is which as you watch this movie. I think that's one of the major points of Tarkovsky's movie, in fact. What are our lives exactly? We like to separate fiction from reality and draw a hard line between the two. But in fact, aren't we all just dreaming? Maybe we're all just hallucinating. What are our memories, after all? Are they real or imagined or a mix of both? Tarkovsky is very seriously exploring those questions about who we are and what our identity is now, given that we've had a past life that we're not really sure about and that there are no records of. I would say this movie is a little bit like Augustine's Confessions in that it's a reminiscence, but it's also sort of a poem and a prayer even. And I would not really classify this as a standard movie with a narrative. It does sort of have a narrative, just a tiny little bit, but really I think of this movie as a series of interlocking poems. And the poems are of different quality, they're odes. I say that because there's a lot of voiceover work in this movie by Tarkovsky's own father who reads his own own poems. It's very poignant because in the movie there's always a threat that the father will never return home from World War II. And you see scenes from the past where the mother and the children are wishing that the father would return. Tarkovsky is very clearly alluding to lots of classical literature in this movie. Among the artists who come up are Chekhov and Dostoevsky and Dante. And about the last name, Poet, you have to remember that Dante's Divine Comedy is autobiographical.
autobiographical. It's an autobiographical poem. It's quoted at one point in the movie, the first lines of that work. And Dante in his comedy is exploring who he is as a man in this crazy mixed up world and in the universe in general. That's pretty much, I think, what Tarkovsky is doing. And the last shot, the last image in the movie alludes very seriously to Dante's opening lines. Other classical artists include the music used in this. Deliberately in the opening credits, you see that the music is composed by Bach, Perugini, and Purcell. What's Tarkovsky doing in this movie? I think one of the ideas is that the movie world is a mirror to our own lives. And by creating an autobiography of a sort, or the biography of a fictional character, the movie mirrors our own lives and the way we perceive ourselves or might perceive ourselves as a whole individual who's lived through a lot of events and whose memories are faulty at best and who dreams and hallucinates as well. But there's another catch. Maybe the movie world is the real world, and this world is the mirror. I mean, the title could work both ways. Either it, the mirror is the movie world, or the mirror is our world that reflects the movies. Tarkovsky is one of the masters of cinema, as just about everybody knows, and I believe that this movie is his masterpiece. If you've seen this movie, what do you think? Please leave me a comment or two. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I hope you have a great day.